For decades now, can lights or recessed lights have been helping people brighten their homes, eliminate shadows, and spread light around their rooms. But in recent years, LED lights have pretty much reinvented the recessed lighting market thanks to their cost efficiency and their versatility. So this week, I teamed up with Harrison Peacock of CCS Triangle Electric in Raleigh, North Carolina. Harrison is a fantastic electrician, and he showed me five things to keep in mind when planning your LED can light install. So let's get to it. The first thing you need to know about LED recessed lights is that color temperature matters. Typical incandescent bulbs mostly give off a soft yellowish light with some whiter tones available. But across the board, LEDs are capable of producing color in a much wider range. When you buy an LED recessed light, look at the package. It will indicate where that bulb's coloration falls on a Kelvin spectrum. The 3000 Kelvin range will give you that yellowish light similar to incandescence, which is best for bedrooms, living rooms, comfortable places where you want to relax. LEDs in the 4 to 5000 Kelvin range will produce a far wider light, perfect for bathrooms, kitchens, and work areas where you want to bring things into sharper focus and concentrate more on what you're seeing and doing. But just note that light in the low yellowish or high bluish range can interact adversely with the color of your walls. Harrison had recalled one instance where a homeowner had used 3000K bulbs in a bedroom with brown walls. That yellowish light turned those walls pink. In that instance, CCS Electric switched those fixtures to the higher 4000K bulbs, and the wider light once again brought out the brown paint colors in the room. The second thing to know about LED recessed lights is that they work better with dimmer switches. Even taking the Kelvin range into consideration, many people feel that their LED can lights are just a little bit too bright. It's really just a byproduct of how the light is being produced inside the bulb. For this reason, Harrison believes that LED can lights should typically be installed on dimmer switches. This lets the homeowner set the light intensity to a level that suits them. But LEDs draw such a lower wattage than incandescent bulbs that they don't always function well on typical dimmer switches. A CL dimmer is specifically designed for LEDs, so that's probably what you'll be looking for. But just to be safe, research manufacturer guidelines for your bulb and your dimmer switch to make sure that you have compatibility between the two products. Issue number three, spacing is very important. Can lights are meant to be used in quantity. A single can light rarely has the power to illuminate a whole room. Instead, multiple lights work together to blanket a room with light. So, when creating a recessed light array, Harrison doesn't like to have lights more than four feet away from each other on a linear path. Even with larger six inch lights, the overlapping cones of illumination may fail to reach effectively beyond this distance. He also prefers a minimum spacing of two feet between walls and recessed lights. This distance produces better wall washing or effective light coverage of the area. Going closer than this can result in wall grazing or sharp light that picks out contours and defects and fails to maximize broad illumination. Also, projections and obstructions should be taken into consideration. Open top cabinets like the ones in this kitchen can encroach on down lights. So cans should be positioned relative to cabinet fronts to avoid interference. And ceiling fans can also play a factor. If can lights and fans are spaced too closely together, fan blades can sometimes chop the cone of illumination causing a mild but disconcerting strobe effect. It's best to work closely with good electricians like Harrison and CCS to anticipate and avoid these layout errors. And speaking of layout, the fourth thing you need to know about LED recessed lights is that they are way more mobile than they used to be. Recessed lights used to require a sizable housing that had to fit between joists and overhead framing lumber, making layout very tricky and frustrating in some houses. But thanks to newer LED technologies, Ultra-thin recessed lights can now go virtually anywhere. These units are only as thick as the drywall they mount into, which means they can be positioned directly beneath framing obstructions. And because they're so lightweight, they hold themselves in place just by means of spring-loaded clips. You can see Harrison reinstalling one here. These ultra-thin models used to carry a much heavier price tag, but more and more companies have engineered their own models, so they're getting widespread distribution these days. And if you go on Amazon, you can get them for a very reasonable price. <laughs> Harrison's originally from Brighton, England, which makes these conversations with him a little bit more fun. And since we're on the topic of technology, the fifth and final thing you should know about recessed lights is that they're starting to incorporate a lot more gadgets. Do you like listening to music in the shower? Harrison's clients do. So in these two shower enclosures, he installed LED cans with speakers in them. These units work by Bluetooth, and you can link multiple units together to make music and lighting simultaneously available in areas where you might want both. He connected to it and queued up a song for me in seconds while we were standing there. I've got to admit, it's pretty luxurious. And while they're not cheap, the products are simple and convenient, so retrofits are fairly straightforward. 
That's it, five quick things to know about LED recessed lights. I wanna thank Harrison and CCS Triangle Electric for helping me make this video. In the near future, I'm gonna team up with them again for hands-on installations and more electrical advice. So keep your eyes peeled for those videos. As always, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button down beside the subscribe button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know every time I post a new video. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.